Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. You've heard of chicken and waffles? What about pancakes and chicken? We're doing it all on the griddle. You guys watch this. One of the most iconic breakfast dishes probably across the United States, chicken and waffles. Well, when you're cooking on the griddle, you're kind of hamstrung or limited in your waffle making experience. So I thought, why not pancakes and fried chicken? All right, ton of mise en place already done. I've already got a bunch of ingredients done. The big kicker is our pancake recipe is on theflattopking.com and this is actually what it looks like when you print it out. Just so you know, through the process today, I'm also gonna be answering a few questions that we've received since we've introduced the Weber um, four burner gas grill with griddle insert. Okay, all right. So let's just do a quick rundown of ingredients of the stuff that I've already done. We have the dry mix ready for the pancakes, okay? Um, out of 4.98 stars, out of 79 votes, some people said, what if you take the egg whites and you beat them separately, then you fold that into your already fluffy pancakes? I said, well, what if? Try that today. Same exact recipe. Same recipe, just one different step different. We have our buttermilk soaked chicken that's been in uh, buttermilk, and jalapeno juice for about two to three hours. They're chicken tenders, okay? So they're the small filet part of the chicken breast. And when you say jalapeno juice, you mean the juice from a jar of jalapenos? Yes, I do. About how much? I'd probably say just enough buttermilk to cover the chicken, and then I'd probably put about a, a quarter to half a cup of the jalapeno juice. In this mix right here, this is only flour, and cornstarch. I have two cups of flour and a quarter cup of cor uh, cornstarch. So cornstarch is going to help with the crispiness. Um, moving quickly, we just have an, a random array of spices. One of the very few times I believe that breading your seasoning will be beneficial. So today we've got uh, seasoning your breading. What I say? Breading your seasoning. <laughs> so <laughs> seasoning we, your flour. If you guys know how many takes it took me to get. Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. All right, onion powder, cayenne pepper, garlic smoked paprika i think every pantry in america should have it chili powder uh coarse black pepper and salt Woo. i've got my shake that just in case i'm just not exactly sure where it might fit into the recipe all right so that's going to season our flour and then to top it off i've got some butter some maple syrup and some sriracha okay good i think the first thing we should do is start the chicken so the chicken has a chance to receive the flour and get all nice and ready to go. We're gonna put our whole griddle on low and adjust the temps as needed. All right, one of the questions we got was, uh, we got it very often. Since my grease trap is in the back right and you have the open holes here, which um, have some heat come through, they said, what if you switch the thing around? You cannot do that. Your grease trap system underneath that holds your grease matches up with your grease hole here. Okay? Can we see underneath real quick? For people that... Okay. Um, now let's get this thing fired up. I'm gonna cook this on low because this burner does run hot. Okay, we've got a large cast iron skillet and we got some peanut oil there. All right, to our flour mix, I'm going to try to eyeball. There's no rhyme or reason, it's seasoned flour. But one thing's for sure, after you're done seasoning your flour, you might wanna go ahead and taste your flour because if it doesn't taste like anything, then that means your flour itself is not seasoned. A little bit of chili powder, smoked paprika. That's gonna give us a color as well. Ooh, that smells good already. Garlic, probably times two. Two good swipes. A little bit of onion powder. And for your heat, we have some red cayenne pepper. See the colors mixed up in your flour? That's a good sign already. Give it a good mix. Like I said, do not be scared. It's garlicky. 
smoky. I think it needs more salt. So to substitute that, we're going to add shake that. It's already got salt, pepper, garlic, and butter in there, but I think it's going to help it just with another complex layer of flavors. And that's what we're looking for. Okay. All right. We have our dredging station. If you want to do chicken thighs, you definitely can. You want to do chicken breasts and cut them in strips, you can. So this is going to be some spicy chicken with all that jalapeno juice. Uh, I think it's more about the pickling than it is the heat. Okay. Really get in there with your hands. Okay. You really want to press that batter, the flour into the um, buttermilk. Okay, you guys can see I've worked through three pieces, so I'm gonna get the rest of these knocked out. I'm gonna put them on the sheet tray right here. While everything's heating up, we're gonna switch gears and start the pancake batter because I do believe that pancake batter needs to rest as well. Chicken's not knocked out, it's resting. That sauce from the buttermilk is gonna help um, absorb that flour. That's what you want, okay? Like I said, we have our wet ingredients here. Um, and we have two eggs in this recipe. I've separated the egg whites from the egg yolks. The egg yolks are in there, it's already mixed up. These are two egg whites and we're gonna beat it to a soft peak. All right, so your peaks should look something like that. See how they're holding to the side of the bowl? Kind of like a soft to medium peak right there. All right, so this is the idea. Uh, since I've never done it before, we're gonna add the wet to the dry uh, mix it up so that way we don't overmix, and then we'll fold in the egg whites. Okay, so this is the um, the sugar, the vanilla, the eggs, the sour cream, vinegar. Okay, remember we don't want to overmix. So right before it's incorporated, we're gonna fold those egg whites. If I was doing the pancake mix separate, I'll keep folding until it's all incorporated. But like I said, I don't want to over mix when you're folding it sounds just exactly what it is so you're going to cut and fold cut straight down and fold all right and there you go there's your batter look at all the dang lumps that's what you want that's how you have airy fluffy pancakes okay let that sit all right so on low we're only hitting about 310 to 320 which means we need to crank up the temp because I'm gonna shoot for about 375. So we're just gonna go about a medium low. Okay. All right, while our griddle's heating up, this is done. Uh, we're gonna have to fry in batches because you don't wanna overload your grease. We're looking about 375. See how the flour it has taken and made that paste? That's a good sign. Okay. All right, we have a quarter cup of butter. I'm gonna add about a half a cup to three quarter cup of um, I uh, will just add it all. Syrup, it's probably about three quarters of a cup. And about two to three tablespoons of sriracha. Now you can always add um, red pepper directly to it. We're just gonna let this kind of simmer away, become one. We thought about doing hot honey, but yep. our grocery store didn't have it. So we're making spicy syrup. Yep. Um, on the Weber griddle, uh, the Weber gas grill, this thing actually folds out. Nice resting rice. That's gonna be perfect for the um, for the fried chicken. All right, getting close. So I'm gonna turn it down just a hair. Remember, once you add something, uh, it'll take some of the heat away. So we're just gonna put on there a little bit of butter. Try not to disturb all that pancake mix. Fantastic. Hurry. Mmm. Ah, ah. Well, that is good. That is good. Ooh, 
that beautiful golden brown fried chicken. Boy, that looks like a perfect chicken tender. I would probably guess to say that this oil does not need to wait to come back up. I'm sure it's hot enough. We're just going to double check. Remember, when you add something, you know, like chicken, your oil will calm down. But this is a very, very strong unit, and um, it can handle it. So just don't overcrowd your pan. You can go right back in it. Sometimes you just need to check your oil temp just to make sure that you don't have to wait a couple minutes for it to come back up to temperature. And what is the correct temperature? Three, about, about 350 to 375. You guys can see that we got great color. Um, you are kind of limited in your turning ability, especially when you unfold this. But you know what? You gain some to lose some. So I'm fine with it. But absolutely, look at those. Look how we're puffing up here. That's beautiful. All right, so I just turned this eye off. I moved this back up and I dropped this down so you can see what we're doing here. So I'm just working on three burners and I have a little bit more space to flip. So. Really quick so I can show you the dials. This red little line right here is kind of matching up with that uh, little doohickey right there, that symbol. Just to give you an idea if you've got it. So this has been on quite a long time. We run through four batches of chicken and this will be our third or fourth batch of pancakes. Um, 387, 399, and about 375. So it's running just a hair hot but the pancakes have not uh, noticed the difference about 375. So even if you hit that 400 mark, it's not gonna matter, but it has held extremely consistent since we started. And that should be something to what you get right there. Well, this is for all the marbles. Just take that fried chicken right on top of your pancake. Take that sriracha, butter, and maple syrup right over top of it. <laughs> the pancakes are amazing and the chicken is amazing. We already know that. It's good. Let's go. There is something about waiting to take a picture that just absolutely drives me crazy, especially when it's something like this. You lose the crispiness. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Let's just try the chicken by itself. Oh, <laughs> mm. you snooze, you lose. Mm. That's good fried chicken. Um, the one, God, get out of here, fly. The one thing that I will say, and this is just after we've talked off camera, did the idea of doing the egg white separate from the batter change the pancakes that enough to make it worth it? We didn't think so. That doesn't mean that we're not saying that if you really think it makes a difference in your recipe, go right ahead. We just didn't see the, the benefit or the non-benefit. Like it just didn't change it. These things are tender to begin with. They're very fluffy to start with and they have a really great flavor. That's phenomenal. Okay, let me have a bite with everything. That is phenomenal. The spicy syrup. The chicken is not too spicy. I was afraid of, that it would be. Why? Because of juice? Yeah. Oh, juice. <laughs> oh. I'm going to show a picture of that right there. Mmm. 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 That chicken is really good. It is good. That is good. All right, guys, there you go. That's our version of chicken and waffles. Golly, that's it. good. <laughs> we did it griddle style. Chicken and pancakes, right? 
If you guys are interested, we have a join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. Don't forget, you can check out the pancake recipe at theflattopking.com. We have multiple recipes on there. Plus, you can print them out, user-friendly, you name it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. Share it with your friends. Woo. Golly, that's good. I don't know what I like better, the chicken or the pancakes. It's almost like they were made together. <laughs> God, look at these pancakes, though. Oh. <gasps>